It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear, and it absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead. Welcome to Random Movie Reviews. I'm Nathan, and today I'll be talking about The Terminator. So I am talking about The Terminator today because the film is turning 40 years old this year as well as every film that was released back in 1984. So be on the lookout for future 80s classic reviews such as Ghostbusters, Gremlins, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and Beverly Hills Cop, which that might actually be my next uh, video since the sequel is coming out soon. So we should revisit that classic. But today we are talking about The Terminator. Uh, an iconic science fiction action film, maybe horror film, uh, rewatching this movie because it's been a while since I last watched it. Uh, it is definitely more of like a science fiction horror movie, in my opinion, and just in terms of sheer atmosphere alone. Uh, you know, but the film spawned one of the greatest sequels of all time, Terminator 2, which I will talk about a little bit in this video. And then a bunch of other movies that um, I really couldn't care less about. I think I saw Terminator... What was it? Terminator Salvation with Christian Bale. I think I saw that movie once and don't really remember anything about it. Terminator 3 is another one that I don't really remember at all. Uh, just a lot of lackluster sequels that are, you know, what was the last one? Dark Fate? When did that come out? 2019? So, so it's like still being like made today and they should probably stop because you can't really, once you, you can't top the first two Terminator movies. You really can't and they keep trying and they should probably stop doing that. I'm not going to get too much into that. We're focusing on the first Terminator film, which came out in 1984. Uh, if you haven't seen this movie, do you even like movies? I mean, you, even if you don't like these kinds of movies, Terminator is a film that needs to be seen at least once in your lifetime. And so for those who may not know, the film revolves around Sarah Connor, uh, a very optimistic young adult who is in the prime of her life and her world is about to get turned drastically upside down when she runs into a soldier of the future by the name of Kyle Reese, who was sent back in time in the year 2029, where mankind is in a vicious war with artificial intelligence machines from a company called Skynet, and these machines are called Terminators. And the Terminators send one of their own back in time who looks like a human, who looks like a 80s Schwarzenegger at his most muscular with giant man pecs. Uh, back in time as well to try to kill Sarah Connor because she is the mother of the human resistance leader John Connor. The premise of the film is, is pretty straightforward. The simplicity of the plot is to the film's benefit because this movie is really about the tension, the intensity, the atmosphere. And uh, it's, it's basically a, a chase movie, essentially. There's so much about this movie that holds up remarkably well. I just, I think that the film's really gritty atmosphere is still uh, amazing to watch. Whenever I'm in a Terminator mood, I watch Terminator 2. I've seen that movie. I can't even tell you how many times. It's not that I don't like the first Terminator. I love it very much. I just grew up watching Terminator 2, and so I have a particular nostalgia to that movie. But yeah, the first Terminator, man, it is it is very different from the second one. It is, it is much more dour. It's much more bleak. There are some moments of humor that are fun and enjoyable. How do I look? Like shit, boss. Yo, mama. Fuck you, asshole. But overall, man, this movie, once it gets going, it really doesn't stop. And it just keeps getting more intense as it goes on. You know, Schwarzenegger is one of those actors where obviously everybody knows he's very limited with his acting ability, but he's just always been very smart about picking roles that are really suitable for him. And, you know, movies like Conan the Barbarian, this film, Commando, which I... I want to do a review on Commando soon because that is one of my all-time favorite 80s action movies. Predator, I mean, he just, he has a really good eye for great scripts, or at least he did in his prime. And uh, The Terminator is just a shining example of that. He was just kind of at the right place at the right time, and his star was already on the rise because of Conan the Barbarian, another one of my favorites. 
Uh, but this this was the movie that really took his stardom to the next level, and basically he would be the reigning king of 80s action movies. Alongside Sylvester Stallone, their competition has always been hilarious to me. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, you, you would do Rambo, and then he would do... Commando. Commando, yeah. <laughs> but Schwarzenegger's presence in this movie is scary as shit. This is definitely the film where, because he would primarily play good guys... Uh, after this movie, even in Terminator 2, he comes back as a good guy. But in this movie, he is intimidating as hell. He really conveys amazingly well that he is a indestructible killing machine. One of the scenes that really is like really frightening to think about is the scene where Sarah's like in the police station and the cops are like, oh, don't worry. You know, this is a guarded police station, 24 hours. There's over 30 cops here. You're going to be safe. No. Because that scene not only has the most iconic line in the whole movie, as well as in all of action movies, period. I'll be back. But he just rams his fucking car in there, grabs two guns, and just destroys everybody. And in that moment, I was like, there's that scene where it kind of briefly cuts to uh, Sarah's face. And she's like, oh, God, I, I'm really screwed here. And like, you just feel I, the movie's so tragic to Sarah Connor's character, because before this, she was such an upbeat kind of everyday girl. I mean, she had a shitty job working as a waitress, but you really just feel for her character. And one of the other reasons why I really love Terminator 2 is because that's whenever I think of Sarah Connor, that's the version of Sarah Connor I think about where she's fully formed. She's not taking any shit from anybody. And, you know, she's just a amazing badass, but you can't get that character transformation without the first movie. And that's really just a testament to how uh, great of an actress Linda Hamilton is, very underrated. Uh, I, th I do think it helps that there's a pretty significant time gap between the first Terminator and Terminator 2. First one was made in 1984, the second one came out in 91. Uh, so obviously there was a lot of time for Linda Hamilton to mature both physically and as an actress. But watching these two movies back to back, I mean, it's really satisfying seeing how much her character becomes the badass that she was born to be in Terminator 2. But it is tragic because, you know, she, her life gets changed due to circumstances that are beyond her control. And you just really, I really feel sympathetic for her throughout this entire movie. And I think that's one of the reasons why the tension is so palpable throughout because you you know she's going to survive because of the sequels, obviously, but it's like, this is so not fair to her, you know? And she just kind of has to deal with it. And that just adds, to, like I said, that adds to the tension and the horror aspect. In many ways, she is kind of the final girl of Terminator. The Terminator film is really structured like a slasher. There are some differences where uh, instead of uh, the Terminator just killing for the sake of killing, he's specifically looking for Sarah Connor and he has to kill all the Sarah Connors in the area because they didn't have, uh, the Terminators didn't have the records of uh, Sarah Connor. So he says like, go back in time. This is the area that she was in and just wipe out all the Sarah Connors. And uh, so that gives it its slasher feel where the Terminator is going after every Sarah Connor. And then when it gets to Lyndall Hamilton, it's just like, Oh boy, the tension is, the, the stakes are incredibly high. Now it's time we get to what I think is the best aspect of this whole movie, and that is Michael Bean as Kyle Reese. I just think Michael Bean is an incredibly underrated actor in general. He is far and away the best thing about this movie in terms of a performance. You know, he is so sincere and so intense, but it never feels overboard. It never feels like he's going over the top or being too dramatic with it. It's like the perfect amount of intensity you need to see from this character. And he's delivering some lines that might come off as as goofy, but because he is being so sincere about it when he's like the the interrogation scene where he's being interrogated by the uh, dickhead psychiatrist who we later see in Terminator 2. Just all, him trying to explain who he is, how he came here, you know, time travel, what it's like in the future. Like there are some moments that that could have come off as goofy if they were delivered wrong, those lines. And Michael Bean delivers it beautifully. And there's that scene where he's like, shut up. And he just snaps. Who is an authority here? Shut up. You still don't get it, do you? He'll find her. That's what he does. And he's just so great in this movie and the chemistry he shares with Linda Hamilton is also very good uh, but that does get to one of my kind of gripes with the movie which is the the plot point that Kyle Reese is John Connor's father 
But if you really think about that, that doesn't make any sense because in the timeline that they're in before Kyle goes back in time, like John Connor already existed. And I believe he's around the same age as Kyle Reese, if I'm not mistaken. And so it's like, well, then how could Kyle Reese be his father? But that's, you know, we're getting to an area where when you talk about any time travel movie, if you pick at it enough, like it'll, everything will start to unravel. So it's just a minor gripe. I don't think James Cameron really needed to make that plot twist that Kyle Reese is, is the father of, of John Connor. But regardless... I think I think most of this movie works beautifully well. Uh, this many of the special effects still hold up uh, very well too. There's one scene in particular where uh, Schwarzenegger is like repairing his arm, and you know you look underneath the skin, and you see the metal brackets moving around and stuff, and that is so great. And then the makeup towards the end when he's like in the truck going after. Uh, Kyle and Sarah and you know you got the red eye showing and that makeup still looks great but then there's some wonky aspects of the special effects there's the scene where he's fixing his eye and if you and they filmed that a little bit more uh, subtly and didn't have to show his complete face I think that actually would have been more effective but of course they show the Terminator's head and, it, and it's clearly an effects doll with you know a red eye in it and it looks it doesn't really hold up it, it's still impressive to look at uh, but the biggest the biggest thing is towards the end where the stop motion with the skeleton version of the Terminator, that looks not great. It's not a deal breaker, but this is one of the reasons why I prefer Terminator 2 is because, you know, I know Terminator 2 had a much larger budget and it came several years after uh, the original Terminator and there was major advancements in uh, special effects and CGI and stuff like that. But regardless, both movies are over 30 years old now and one of them has aged amazingly, and the other one hasn't aged quite as great, but is still an awesome movie overall. Terminator overall is an incredibly well-made, well-structured, uh, perfectly executed action slash sci-fi horror thriller. Uh, this movie succeeds with its intensity, its atmosphere, and it's just a well-oiled machine, and it does briefly touch on themes of fate, in war uh, with mankind, but Terminator 2 takes all of those elements and make them even stronger, which is why I prefer the film. I mean, thematically, the film is even deeper and more complex than the first Terminator. I think my favorite scene in both, in all the Terminator movies, but specifically the first two, is the scene where Sarah Connor is uh, having a nightmare about the nuclear apocalypse that leads into the war between man and machine. She wakes up and she's like, fuck this, I'm gonna go take care of this right now. And she's gonna go kill Miles Dyson, who is the engineer or scientist that ends up uh, creating the first Terminator and Skynet. And he is an integral part as to why this war even begins in the first place. And so she goes over to his house and tries to assassinate them. But John Connor and the Terminator, the T-100, they go over there to stop Sarah. And then Sarah ends up having a, a breakdown because she ends up becoming the very thing that ruined her life, which is a Terminator. Someone who knows what the future is going to be and is looking to change it by killing somebody else. And then she realizes her mistakes. And it's such a, I mean, thematically, it is such a powerful scene and, it, and it's so major for her character. And it, it really... I mean, that elevates the movie to another level, just that scene alone for me. And then on top of that, you have better action, um, better special effects, and overall, a movie that has a good combination of dark intensity, but also a nice optimism. The movie ends on a good note about uh, having a good future for humanity. So that's, an, that's another aspect that I why I love Terminator 2 so much, but I don't want to take away, I don't want to make it sound like I don't love the first Terminator. I do. I just, whenever I'm in a Terminator mood, T2 is kind of my go-to, but I got to say, uh, rewatching this for the first time in a while, it does make me appreciate this movie more on a filmmaking level because this movie was made on, on a fairly modest budget. It wasn't a big budgeted movie and it was a bit of a sleeper hit. The movie didn't make uh, a ton of money right away, but like through word of mouth, the movie ended up getting very popular. And then when it got released on VHS, it got even more popular. Uh, and it just uh, it really cemented James Cameron as, as being one of the best and most innovative filmmakers of his generation. Uh, it's a real shame that he's devoted the rest of his life to making Avatar movies. That really bums me out, but maybe that's a video for another time. 
But yeah, we got to celebrate the first Terminator. It's 40 years old now. This movie is a freaking gem. It's awesome. It's badass. It's still intense. Like, even though some of the special effects may, may not hold up, a lot of the special effects do, and it's still just a blast to watch. It's not boring. It's so just balls to the wall. Good stuff, man. So yeah, um, tell me what your guys' thoughts on the first Terminator movie is. Um, what are your thoughts on James Cameron as a filmmaker? What other movies of his would you like to hear me review? And what other 80s movies would you like to hear me review? I already named a few at the beginning of this video. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>